perfection of taxation such as ever home in America. Cutting through the static of the tax world, it's Simply Tax. Brought to you by BKD CPAs and Advisors. Everyone needs a trusted advisor. Who's yours? Now here's your host, Damian Martin. Hello and welcome to Simply Tax. It's Tuesday, November 10, 2020, and you don't need me to tell you. There's been a lot of talk about the outlook for tax change and what it means for year-end planning as of late. This past Saturday, November 7, the world learned Joseph R. Biden Jr. had secured the votes he needed from the Electoral College in Pennsylvania to push him beyond 270 and was elected President of the United States. While the outcome of the presidential election provides some answers to questions related to the tax outlook for 2021 and beyond, many remain with a pair of key elections in Georgia headed for runoff elections on January 5, 2021, as required under Georgia law, after no candidate received a majority of the vote in the November election. As of the time of releasing this episode, the Senate races in Alaska and North Carolina have not yet been called, but... Republican incumbent Senators Tom Tillis and Dan Sullivan are leading and expected to hold on to their seats. This would bring the Senate composition to 50 Republican seats to the Democrats' 48 ahead of the Georgia runoff election. As a result, the two remaining Senate seats in Georgia will determine which party will control the Senate for the next two years, since picking up two additional seats would allow Democrats to secure control in the Senate with a 50-seat to 50-seat tie and a tie-breaking vote coming from Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Okay, so what does all this mean for tax changes? Control of the Senate becomes significant for advancing a party's agenda when they control both the House and the White House, as we saw with the enactment of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017. Although a 60-vote filibuster-proof majority is generally needed in the Senate to advance legislation, and narrow majorities in the Senate have historically caused legislative agendas for both parties to stall unless they are willing to compromise to attract bipartisan support, Budget reconciliation procedures allow legislation to be approved in the Senate with a simple 51-vote majority. So, if Democrats pick up both of the remaining Senate seats in Georgia, Democrats would be able to use budget reconciliation to advance the tax changes proposed by the Biden campaign despite anticipated opposition from Republicans. Now, unlike with 2017 tax reform, Use of budget reconciliation would likely pose less of a challenge for the Biden administration, despite Senate rules prohibiting the use of the reconciliation process to consider legislation that would increase the deficit during the budget window, since the Biden tax proposals would increase tax rates and curtail deductions for some taxpayers, raising expected tax revenue of more than $3 trillion over the 10-year budget window on a conventional scoring basis. You can find out how these proposals stack up against current tax law and what they might mean for you with a side-by-side comparison and summary that you'll find in the show notes of this episode available at bkd.com slash simplytax. Now you might also be wondering, what does all this mean for your year in tax planning? The uncertainty caused by not only the cliffhanger in the Senate, but also the ongoing effects of the pandemic make for a challenging environment this year. For example, on one hand, Moves to generate business losses in 2020 by accelerating deductions and deferring income would allow businesses to increase loss carrybacks, and that might allow them to offset income that was taxed at higher pre-TCJA rates under a provision provided under the CARES Act. On the other hand, however, the prospect of higher tax rates for some under the Biden tax proposals would favor accelerating income into 2020 to lock in current tax rates, as well as deferring deductions since you generally get more bang for your tax buck in a higher tax rate environment. These challenges and several others make year-end tax planning more important than ever this year and will require a multifaceted and customized approach to your specific situation. The good news is we've got you covered with resources and insights. First, I'd like to personally invite you to join me this morning and tomorrow morning to learn more about the possible planning opportunities you should consider for you, your family, and your business before year-end with a pair of two-hour panel discussions that I'll be moderating. If you're listening to this episode after today or tomorrow, It's not a problem. The archived recordings will be posted within 72 hours of the event, along with the materials. You'll find links to sign up or watch the archives in the show notes of this episode at bkd.com slash simplytax. A second way we've got you covered is BKD's year-end 2020 tax advisor that's chock full of articles that not only break down the election and COVID-19 related relief, but explain what they mean for you, your taxes, and your year-end planning, and cover other important topics like cybersecurity and more. 
And that's why I'm excited to invite a returning guest back to the podcast to share insights from this year's Urine Tax Advisor. Take it away, Julia. My name is Julia Dingle. I am a senior manager with our national office tax team. Um, I've been with the firm for about seven years now, and I've been with our national office team for about three. And one of the projects that uh, is kind of under my bucket with the national office team is our yearly, what we call our year-end tax advisor. So yeah, I'm happy to sit down and talk to you about that today. I'm excited about it as well. And I will say I always look forward to the articles, especially in, in, well, in any given year, but I'd say particularly in this year because it's just been so much. I feel like everybody I talk to is just on overload and doesn't know what to where to focus. You know, so much has changed and happened, which, by the way, speaking of changes and happening, congrats on the promotion, by the way. Thank you. I would imagine this year's tax advisor kind of reflects the fact that we've had a sort of an unusual year. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually thinking about this, and it it seems like there's never a typical year nowadays. Um, We kind of knew that this year would be special uh, and that we'd need to share insights and um, do some planning around um, just election year. So that's something that we knew we'd have to deal with. um, But a global pandemic was definitely not on our radar um, a year ago. Uh, So readers of this year's tax advisor will probably notice that there are kind of two common themes that run through most of this year's articles and and that's the 2020 presidential election and then the ongoing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Who is the tax advisor written for and who should read it? Yeah. So uh, just a little bit more background on the tax advisor itself. And I think it will kind of answer that question is the tax advisor is kind of BKD's last hurrah of the year to showcase our thought leadership while also sharing end of year insights and planning considerations all in one kind of nice, easy package. Of course, BKD is pumping out content throughout the entire year since our goal is to make sure that our Thoughtware subscribers are keeping up with the latest tax news as it occurs. Uh, but the tax advisor advisor actually offers an easily digestible recap of what's happened during the year with a focus on what it all means for the individuals and business owners reading it. So uh, to more directly answer your question, the tax advisor is kind of tailored and specifically created to be for anyone. If you find yourself subscribed to our BKD tax thoughtware, which I highly recommend that you do, then these articles are going to be right up your alley. Um, If you're not already subscribed, again, definitely recommend that you subscribe. Um, You'll also get something out of these articles. There's a wide range of topics for individuals, business owners, businesses. You're sure to take something away from it. Let's jump in because I know there are are a few that caught my eye and thought we can, uh, again, give a little tour of them, maybe a little preview, and then obviously uh, save some of the good stuff for the actual article itself. I guess first one that kind of stands out and is an important one probably more and more recently, but particularly right now, and that's kind of dealing with cybercrime during the the pandemic. Um, And I know you actually were a co-author of this one. So uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, the article? Absolutely. Yeah. So in each yearly tax advisor, there's kind of a core set of recurring articles that no matter what else is going on in the world, we just like to make sure that our readers are keeping those certain topics in mind. Um, And one of those topics, like you said, is cybersecurity. So this year's article focuses, of course, um, like everything else, it's focused on cybercrime during COVID-19 and specifically how to first protect your organization from being a victim of a cybercrime in the first place. Um, and second, how to recover swiftly if those defenses end up failing. And like you said, I actually co-wrote this year's article with Little Rock partner Cindy Boyle. And Cindy's the national practice leader for BKD cybersecurity team. So she's definitely a great resource on this topic. Maybe something that stood out to you or that you learned. Yeah, we all kind of get the idea that cyber criminals are smart and they get smarter every year, um, even every day. So that fact just combined with a global pandemic that has us all feeling a little extra stressed out these days, uh, it, it means that it's more important than ever to make sure that you're practicing proper cyber hygiene. And one of my favorite tips that's included in the article is to verify your emails. Um, it's such an easy way to help prevent yourself from clicking on a risky link and falling into a trap 
trap that has been set by one of those smart criminals. To do that, you just hover your mouse over the return address within the email and just make sure that it's from a source that you recognize. Now, with that said, that's not going to protect you from every email scam, but it is a great first line of defense to weed out those sort of obvious imposters that may try to trip you up. It's. It always seems like it's, it's so obvious, I'll say, right? When you think about it outside of it, but in the moment, you you, you can find yourself falling victim to it so easily. And I, I, I thought the piece was great because it, it gave some of those tips and practical things you can apply right now that are, in, again, and the thing that's so important in protecting the organization and, and your own information. Right. And I think even more important, but it's probably something people don't want to think about is, well, I put all these precautions in place. I, I did the best I can, but you know, I, I still got hacked or I still got my identity stolen or, or something happened. What do I do now? So the article also goes into kind of what now? What do you do now to kind of recover from the trap that was set and you inevitably fell into? Again, um, great things to have at the at the ready so that if, if it does happen, there's a lot that goes through your mind worrying about the worst. And sometimes it's you know, having it all in one spot kind of makes it easy. So So that's great. Speaking of hot topics, perhaps, uh, and I know one that's recurring every year is the the year-end update and, and planning for individuals. So could you talk about that article? Sure. Yeah. So like you said, um, we do have kind of the batch of recurring topics that we want to make sure get included each year because they are relevant each year. And one of those is our year-end tax planning tips. Uh, we do uh, that article. We do two separate articles, actually, one for businesses and one for individuals. And so this year we have Corey Zai, a senior manager in our national office tax group, who authored this year's individual article. Corey's article focuses on some of the typical strategies that taxpayers should consider um, each and every year um, related to income planning, charitable giving, health and education savings, and retirement planning. Uh, she also touches on how the down economy uh, that was created by the COVID-19 pandemic can present certain tax planning opportunities um, that taxpayers should definitely consider. Our tax planning article for businesses was actually co-authored by Brittany Cummings in our National Office Tax Group and Craig Kuchenberg with our Indianapolis team. In that article, they share some income tax planning strategies that businesses should consider as the calendar year comes to a close. I've been hearing a lot of questions about those. Again, I think it's the combination of, like you said, of those two themes, the the pandemic and the relief provisions and everything there and the possible changes with the election, you know, a lot of conversations on the horizon there. So do those two articles help with those conversations? They definitely should help. You brought up the election again. I mean, this year is just jam-packed full of things to consider. So um, these articles also include insights into what individuals and businesses should be thinking about, regardless of which way the the election ends up going. It seems like to me, uh, maybe I'm a little biased being a, a tax guy over here, right? That that some of the planning that goes with that, regardless of what you think is going to happen, like you said, is just good, solid tax planning in general. So perhaps uh, a lot of those, I guess I would say, kind of fall in that bucket and it, and it becomes even more important when you have an inflection point like like an election. Yep, exactly. A great uh, kind of trigger point to, to get those conversations going. I guess anything else from a planning perspective for individuals or businesses? I guess I will say that although this year has presented some extra special challenges, like you said, a lot of the basic kind of blocking and tackling, as they say, is pretty similar year over year. Um, I think just sitting down with your with your tax advisor and going through and making sure that those assumptions that we usually make year over year are still valid this year, given some of the the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic, I think that's a, a key area to pay attention to when you're having those planning conversations. I always say that kind of my favorite time of year is the year in tax planning season. Maybe one, because there's some great holidays in there, right? But then I guess at the same time, it's, you know, getting to actually have some of these conversations. And one that's been coming up, even on some of these preliminary conversations I've been having, uh, revolves a lot around the, the kind of charitable giving. Again, I think everything sort of intensified or changed or whatever you want to use the right word with the pandemic. Um, obviously, there's a lot of need. And so I think that's driving a lot of it. And then, again, the need for tax planning uh, comes up. I know there's a, a piece, as there usually is, on charitable giving and, and planning considerations. Could you dig into the one that we have in the 2020 tax advisor? 
Jessica Cox. Um, she's also a member of our national office tax team here at BKD, and she actually contributed to this year's tax advisor by authoring our 2020 charitable giving tax planning considerations article. Um, like you said, this is another one of those articles that we like to include year over year because we want to make sure that these rules for charitable giving are fresh in everyone's minds as we move into a season where people tend to be in a more of a giving spirit. And so in addition to the usual reminders that we have about how to just make sure that you receive a tax benefit for your donations, if that's what you're seeking. Jessica also focuses in on some key provisions uh, from the recent COVID-19 related tax legislation that was passed earlier this year that's intended to encourage charitable giving. You know, obviously, and we've spent last year when we did our had our conversation, and obviously a lot of the conversations we've had leading up to this have related to and centered around the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And even, gosh, over the over the summer, we had a little stretch and here recently, even with some final regulations coming out related to TCJA guidance. So I know there's one in particular, and I love the title because it's it's one that I feel like it just applies no matter what the actual underlying topic is, is that TCJA complexities and the need to model. And it's, it's just so true. You can't, I've always said, you can't do the back of the napkin math here. And, and boy, is that true in this case. So could you talk us through the article that Chris Clifton did here? I was actually just thinking that it's so bizarre to be having a conversation where the TCJA doesn't hog the whole story, right. um, for better or for worse. I mean, we there's some other more unfortunate things kind of uh, stealing the conversation. But yeah, so that's definitely one topic we haven't really talked about so far, Um, tax reform. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was such a huge deal. And honestly, it still is, um, even though it doesn't get much airtime. But thankfully for us and and the readers of the tax advisor, Chris Clifton, um, who is a managing director with our international tax services team, is here to remind us all that tax reform is still a pretty big deal. Um, And he does that, like you said, in his article about the complexities of the TCJA and subsequently the need to model uh, to reflect those complexities. Something I want to point out is that even if international tax isn't a concern for you or your business, uh, like you said, Damien, the, the underlying message kind of holds true for any type of tax planning. Modeling can help provide um, that sort of important insight into these decisions, regardless of what the decision is. Sometimes a simple Excel calculation is enough, um, but whatever tool you use, just make sure that you're considering all relevant factors and seeking help from a trusted advisor if needed. And I think when you're getting into those tricky complexities related to international tax, um, you're probably going to need help from a trusted advisor. Yes, and I'll say that even with um, some of the, like you said, the other aspects, I feel like it just it really tees up the point of that you got to have a holistic modeling when you're doing it. I mean, you're doing things in a vacuum sometimes. It, it just sort of doesn't give you the whole the whole picture, I guess. Exactly. I, you mentioned kind of at the beginning that it, it takes, again, that kind of practical approach. It kind of buckets things together, makes it approachable when there's just been so much going on. Again, this year being a perfect example of that. I know it takes a bit of an of an industry approach, really. So could we kind of walk through maybe some of the articles that caught your eye from a, an industry perspective? So this year we... Uh, like you said, we wanted to make more of an intentional effort to bring in more of that industry-specific insight uh, with this year's tax advisor. Now, those insights usually, uh, they do make their way in through other articles and throughout the year, we have our uh, industry-specific thoughtware. But we thought it was important to speak just directly to the unique issues that certain industries are facing this year, especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and the potential uh, kind of consequences of whichever way (laughs) the 2020 election ends up going. So our industry lineup uh, for this year's tax advisor includes insights from Megan McKenney from our Jackson office on year-end planning and other considerations related to financial services. Uh, We have Kansas City Director Travis Truesdell with a construction, real estate, and hospitality tax overview. Shawnell Linet, a senior manager in our Wichita office, shares the top five tax reminders for nonprofits beyond the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, so the Paycheck Protection Program has gotten plenty of attention this year. So I just love how Shawnell focuses in on what else nonprofits need to be paying attention to. Uh, we also have Nate Check, who's part of our commercial services group, and he takes a look at what this election could bring and some tax planning ideas to consider. Um, and then finally, we have Jen Reason a director in our Cincinnati office, and she provides some great insights from BKD's newest official industry, our private client services group. 
and her article focuses on the implications of transferring your business during an economic downturn and which strategies taxpayers should consider. Well, and I think it is, like you said, so important that there's a lot of nuances there. The industry-specific side of things and how the pandemic has affected them and even the geography, I mean, it it all is so interrelated. And, and it's also just taking the, yes, there's the provisions, there's the there's the tax law, but, but what's the insight? What does it mean? How do you apply it? And so I thought all of those articles did a great job of doing that. And well, I guess I'll applaud you for adding that focus to the tax advisor this year, because I think that that really does make it a little easier to digest, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what I've learned and kind of taken away from this experience, um, especially this year, I work in the national office. I get to see and interact with a lot of our subject matter experts um, in those various industry groups. So I know how awesome the range and depth of our expertise goes, um, but somehow I'm still amazed each year when I see the uh, year-end tax advisor come together to showcase BKD's thought leadership. Um, And it certainly takes a team. I'll Uh, definitely emphasize that. Um, I've focused mainly on our authors during this interview, but there's a whole team of marketing and administrative professionals working behind the scenes uh, just to make the tax advisor not only happen, but make it a a huge success, in my opinion. So I'm excited for your listeners to to check it out. Again, you can find the 2020 Year in Tax Advisor. Hopefully you're subscribed to Thoughtware, so you've already gotten it in your email. And if you're not subscribed, um, you can find it at bkd.com forward slash tax advisor. That's it for today. But to paraphrase what I said at the beginning of this episode today, planning for your end is super duper hard. Okay, well, maybe that's not exactly what I said. And I've been hanging out with six-year-olds a little bit too much lately, but I really would love to help with the challenges this year. Please drop me an email at simplytax at bkd.com or reach out to me on social media to let me know how I can help and what questions I can answer. You can find me on Twitter at DamianMartinCPA, on Instagram at TaxDad, and out on LinkedIn. Be sure to also check out the show notes this episode, as I mentioned earlier, that are available at bkd.com slash simplytags, where you can learn more about Julia and get the links to the great articles that were mentioned during the episode today, and much more. I'm Damian Martin, and thank you for listening. The information contained in this episode of Simply Tax is based on data available as of the date of its release. BKD is under no obligation to update this information if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances. Any information provided is not to be considered as tax, legal, or financial advice. Please consult your tax advisor before acting on any matters covered.